we see great diversity in that which you believe. And in all of that, there is perfect balance. And so we come forth not to alter your beliefs, but to reacquaint you with the eternal laws of the universe. And we are here to express all of that to you in detail. Let's talk a little bit about the nature of desire from, now don't get freaked out, a quantum physics point of view. Oh my God, this is going to talk about physics. I don't want to listen. Don't relax. You're going to enjoy this. When we look around us, even at our own bodies, what we see is the tip of the iceberg. We could say the classical tip of an immense quantum mechanical iceberg. Everything in the universe is energy. Your body's energy. The room you're living in is energy. Everything you want is energy. And that's not a new idea. A, a, a fuzzy-haired guy in 1925 wrote on his chalkboard, E equals MC squared. And we couldn't grasp what that meant. What that says is on one side of the equation is mass and light and everything that we perceive, but it all equals energy. Everything is energy. And let me help you understand that just a little bit. There's the universe, of course, and our galaxy, and our planet, and then individuals, and then inside of this body are organ systems, and then there's cells, and then there's molecules, and then there's atoms, and then there is energy. So there are a lot of levels to talk about something on. But when you get down to it, everything is energy. There's enough energy sitting in there, in one atom, to do amazing things, to possibly even open up the doorways to lighting an entire city. Think of this for a moment. Take your hand and look at it. Now your hand looks solid, but it's really not. If you put it under a proper microscope, you'd see a mass of energy vibrating. And so everything is made up of the exact same thing, whether it's your hand, whether it's the ocean, or whether it's a star. The colored paper with ink on it is not money. It's just energy. And so part of the illusion that we're living in is that you know these things are solid. They're not solid. Neither is a piece of wood, neither is a rock. Get the proper microscope and go and look at a wall. That wall is not solid. That wall is a mass of energy in a very high speed of vibration. It feels solid because of the vibration, the rate at which the molecules are vibrating. Everything in the universe vibrates. In other words, everything moves. We live in a notion of motion. You are vibrational beings in a vibrational universe. Many people are not yet ready to acknowledge that they are vibrational. They prefer to see themselves as blood and bone specimens that they see in the mirror. And we want to remind you that everything that you observe with your physical senses is vibrational interpretation. In other words, you hear because your ears translate vibration. You see because your eyes translate vibration. You smell because your nose translates vibration. Your fingertips are translating vibration. Your tongue is translating vibration. All of your senses are about the translation of vibration and that's why you are able to perceive your environment in the way that you do. So it's very difficult for us as scientists or engineers or medical doctors or anybody to come to terms with the fact that what our senses are telling us is really not the whole story. We've been so taught to live with our physical senses, hear, see, smell, taste and touch. But our physical senses lie. Our physical senses don't tell us the truth. If you only judge by your sensory factors, you'd believe the sun took a bath in the ocean every night and burrowed through the earth and was reborn on the eastern shore the next morning. I mean, the ancients used to believe that, but now you know better than that. If you judged only by your sensory factors, you'd believe that train tracks met in the distance. But you know better than that, and you turn away from your senses. If you lived only by your sensory factors, you'd believe that a dog whistle made no sound. But you know better than that. So you turn away from your sensory factors, and you stand out in your yard, and you blow away. And yet how many times, if we're not careful, do we find ourselves living at nothing more than the sensory level? 
If we take a look at everything in the universe we know from a scientific perspective is made up of something called energy. So what do we know about the properties of energy? Number one, all energy has a vibration. All energy has a vibration. It emits a frequency. We are frequency generators. Uh, if you get close to someone's skin, you can feel infrared energy being given off. If you look at them, you're seeing light energy given off. Uh, we now have uh, scans where you can put a machine around somebody's head instead of putting the electrodes on, the, on their head and perceive and, and record the energy that their brain is giving off. The most potent form of energy, by the way, is thought. It penetrates all space and all time. Every thought has a frequency. We can measure a thought. What most people don't understand is a thought has a biochemical and biological property. Every thought, which means it has a frequency. And so if you're thinking that thought over and over and over again, or if you're imagining in your mind, okay, having that brand new car, having the money that you need, building that company, finding your soulmate, if you imagine what that looks like, you're emitting that frequency on a consistent basis. Our job as humans is to hold on to the thoughts of what we want, make it absolute clear in our minds what we want, and from that we start to invoke one of the greatest laws in the universe. Six reveals that it's the invisible stimuli that are much more important. There's a simple quote by Albert Einstein that makes sense out of this, and the quote is, the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. What Einstein meant by this very simply is the field, the invisible energy forces around us, uh, they are the sole governing agencies of the particle, the particles matter. And so quantum physics says the character of matter is ultimately determined by the field. If we were ever going to interact with our bodies, if we want to heal our bodies, we want to create peace in our families or our communities, we must speak to the fields that connect all things. We must find a meaningful language, a non-verbal language that communicates with the stuff that this world is made of. The bottom line, the through line, is that they're all speaking about an experience, an inner experience that we have focused on our hearts. What the science now is showing is that those experiences extend beyond our bodies into the world around us because the field of our heart is part of the world around us and connected with that field. So that when individuals can find a way to create coherence in their lives and become more cooperative, less aggressive, more willing to solve problems together, that that experience is transmitted in this field and others begin to find the same experience just because they're in that field. They're in that field. When we have a feeling in our hearts, we're creating electrical and magnetic waves inside of our bodies that extend beyond our bodies into the world around us. And what's so interesting is the research shows that those waves extend not just one meter or two meters, many, many kilometers beyond where our heart physically resides. Physically resides.